And so we're going to recreate this card tonight. This is a, a very, it's a form of Retiform. It's kind of a simplified version of Retiform. A lot of times Retiform has stamping in all of these areas. But I kind of just liked how, how this sort of looked uh, when I finished, so I left it alone. And we'll be using three of the 21 to 23, no, the 20 to 22 in colors. And we'll be using Cinnamon Cider, Bumblebee, and Misty Moonlight. We'll also be using a couple of our blending brushes. I've got to get my microfiber cloth out so I can just sort of rub a little of the excess off. I'll need a little bit of a stamping surface or a, a piece of paper to catch some excess ink. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with a piece of four by five and a quarter inch basic white cardstock. We'll be mounting it on a piece of, or a, a card base of early espresso, which I, I don't think I've used in a long time. So happy to be back at it. I'm going to be coloring a little bit with blends and a lot of time with this technique, you don't actually see any coloring. Hi Joyce, you remembered. Hooray. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to first stamp my bird because I know where he wants to go. And this is from the new Etched in Nature set that is not available yet. It will be available on May 4th with the new catalog. Hello, Diana. And so we're going to get the little bird out here. And so it's, it's a really, it's a, it's not my usual style of stamp set. Uh, it's very detailed, um, and you have to understand when you go to stamp with this, the lines are very, very fine. So um, you need to make sure your, your pad is well inked, but not over inked, because uh, it tends to get caught. If, if there's too much, it kind of pools in some of the areas. So you just you need a, a stamp pad that's in good condition. And you just got to be patient. If you have a stamp apparatus, that's always a good option. Hi, Teresa. I'm not sure I've ever met you before, but welcome. Nice to have you with us. Oh, hey, Marie. You're here, too. Thank you for joining us. So I'm going to mount my bird from Etched in Nature. On a clear block and I'm using my Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to be coloring it with some blends later. I just want to stamp that and it it looks a little light to me in areas and I do know I did catch this the other day when I was inking up some thank yous that it wasn't quite inked right. So I'm going to just do this on the other side. Now, if I had my Stamparatus, which I'm tempted to get out, you could see how I could fix that pretty easily. So I'm just gonna try this again. There, much better. So there are still areas that, it, but it looks a little light, but that really is, if you compare it to the image on the stamp set, it's very, it's very lightly sketched in there. So we're done with that. Can clean my stamp. I just want to let that ink set up for just a second because we're going to be coloring with it. So now is as good a time as any to clean my stamp and put it away. Now I will be giving one of these cards away as I try to do every week, by the way, and your card will be in the mail tomorrow. It's actually in the mailbox. I have forgotten four days in a row to actually take it to the mailbox. I've had it ready to go, but. But I'll be giving, uh, sending one of, one of you this card. 
This one is going to go to my uncle who is turning 80 years old very shortly. So I had a cousin that sent out a call for cards and uh, for both he and his mom, they're both turning 80. And so this is what he's getting and she'll be getting one that looks a little more feminine. Now I'm going to color this card a little bit with my blend. So I'm just going to get some of mine out and you can keep it like this. It's not a big deal if you if you don't color it. I happen to like the look of it colored. So I'm going to get out a couple of my blends. This uh, this trunk, tree trunk or branch, I'm going to color with my light crumb cake. And just put some ink there. And what's great about this stamp set is the shading is really done for you by the artists. So it's automatically going to look a little darker in some places than in others because of the way it was created. If you wanted to still add some more depth, you could certainly come in with a darker color and, and put it in some areas, perhaps on this bottom area where you might see a little bit more shadows. The top too. Just bring a little bit more color in if you wanted to. Some of these little cracks, little um, knots. And there we have that. And this is my, my, what color is this? This is my ivory. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading to his, to his ultra skinny little legs. Oh, might as well do his little nose too, or his little beak nose. I do know what those things are called. Whatever, don't make fun of me. I can hear you on the other side of that screen laughing at me. So we've got a bunch of people joining in tonight. Where are you all from? Lots of names I don't recognize. So this is the light soft suede that I'm using right now to color my bird in. And I'm gonna color most of his head. I'm gonna leave his eye a little white. Remember when you color with your blends, you wanna color on the side of it. Wow, where are all these people coming from? Barbara and Carol and Joanne, and um, Merritt, and Reba. Chime in, let me know where you're all from. I'd love to hear. All right, let's see, let's, let's actually color down here a little bit. All right, now it doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but it will look much better in just a few minutes. I'm also, since I'm using Misty Moonlight, I'm going to get out the Misty Moonlight marker as well. And I don't have Magenta Madness, but I have Melon Mambo, and that's pretty close. So I'm going to use that. And this is really bright. I'm going to tone this down a little bit. So it snowed here in Maine today. Reba, Alabama. Wow, that's a long ways away. I bet it's a lot warmer where you are than where we are right now. As I mentioned, it snowed here today. It's still snowing, actually. California. Wow. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm going to do some blending in just a second to make this go together a little bit nicer. Let's go ahead and kind of soften the lines in here with my blender. And I'm actually going over the Misty Moonlight to lighten it a bit as well. And over the magenta to lighten that as well. So I think I need a little bit more Right over in here, I need to add a little bit of color right here that I missed before. And I want to blend that out as well. 
So we're getting ready to do the retiform technique. This is just regular coloring right here. So this is just my bird. What really makes this card, I think, is this retiform technique. Linda, nice of you to join us as well. Ontario, Canada, wow. Not exactly sure how I rated to be uh, popping into everybody's feeds tonight, but not gonna complain, the more the merrier. So with retiform technique, you're going to need some post-its. Now I have some Stampin' Up! post-its from a long time ago. You can use these full sheet post-its. They're sticky everywhere except for this thin little strip right here. You can use the, the regular post-its that I don't seem to have right handy with me, but anything with a sticky edge. You can also take a piece of regular paper and add some two-way glue to it. Let that dry and set up so it's sticky. Anything, anything works there. So I'm going to apply this. And if you notice, I'm going from an edge to edge here. I'm going to start with my bumblebee. And with my blender brush, I'm going to pick up some ink, dab a little bit off, and then in a nice circular motion, apply the ink. Now you can be as light-handed or as heavy-handed as you want. I really liked how rich the tones looked when I kept rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. Got a little bit more depth to the color. I think I even want a little bit more and especially towards the edge. It's okay if you are not perfectly even around here. And so when you take it off, see that nice crisp line you have. Now I'm gonna move around my card. I'm actually gonna to go to my cinnamon cider ink. And I want to maybe put something like that. So I'll have it going up here. I don't want it to run into this bumblebee color though, so I need another post-it. And because I'm using a darker color now, I don't really have to get much excess off my brush. I'm just gonna come in here. And again, I'm dabbing off the first little bit so it doesn't get to be too strong. I'm just coming in again. And coloring in. And so see, I didn't get anything on there. And now I've got a couple different lines. So now let's, let's do something a little different. We'll come up here. And I want to protect this cider area, so I'm lining this up. And I'm actually showing a little bit of the ink. Uh, let me, I, I won't, this side is not sticky, so I can't show you that. But you can see there's a little bit of cider showing here. And I want that because this paper has a little bit of thickness to it. And so if I don't have any of it showing, I'll get a little white strip. And that might actually be close enough, so you'll see what I mean. And I'm going to bring another piece in. And you can use these post-its over and over and over again. Let's see. Let's just have this be our misty moonlight area. I'm taking a different blender brush this time. Our blender brushes come in packs of three. Oh, for a second, I just thought, oh, did I cover up my bird? And I can see I clearly did now, but for a second there, I was a little worried. Oh, so see, I had a, I didn't have any white piece, white showing here because I had just lined up just off the color. So there we have another piece. And I'm gonna extend this now a little bit. 
making it just a tad of that misty moonlight showing, but I'm going to go back here with my bumblebee. It's important to keep your colors straight here. Because I last used the cinnamon cider on this, I'm going to just take some of that excess ink off on a microfiber cloth. Comes off a lot faster this way than it does on just rubbing it on the paper. Pick some more up from my ink pad, dab off a bit, and rub on here. So retiform is one of those techniques that you really like or you really hate. It, I mean, it is quite a bit of work, but the result can be pretty stunning. I have one to show you a little bit later that I don't actually really care for as much. But I, I, I wanted to try something tonight, and uh, I'll show you why I don't care for it as much in a little bit. So now I'm, I need to come in with another another cinnamon cider and that's how I, I work I work you know I have my three colors and then I rotate it I keep rotating so I went bumblebee cider misty moonlight bumblebee it's time for cider again so I can just go down here I want to cover up this blue this misty moonlight And I want to cover up, no, this one's starting to lose its stickiness up here. Sometimes when you have, your ink is wet, so when you're covering up the inked spots already, it will be a little bit less uh, sticky on the inked parts. So there's, I see just a little bit of yellow showing. Uh, where was I going next? I think I was going with cinnamon cider, right? It's easier when you're not talking and getting distracted, I think. All right. Yep, that's good. And I've got one more color to, to really do. And that is my Misty Moonlight again. Put that down. Just cover this little piece right down here. It probably would have been a smart thing for me to actually uh, tack this down just a little bit to my work surface so it wasn't sliding around. But I didn't do it and I'm almost done so I've gotten away with it this long. I'll just keep going. Misty Moonlight, last color. Dab it off a little bit. Nice circular motion. Ta-da! Now, I could leave it white in the middle. You'll see I actually added a very light touch of the misty moonlight. So I think I do want to do that. I don't like it um, quite so stark white. Especially think, I just think um, if it's a, more of a, a card for a, a man, it just seems to work a little bit better if it's not got that pop of white. That just feels a little bit more feminine too. Now, I don't need, I don't want to unnecessarily get out another post-it note. So I'm just going to start very softly. I haven't re-inked this. I'm just going to very softly rub in here. And I'm not going to go up there because I haven't masked that yet. But just come in here very softly in my circles. And the color is light enough so it's not going to take away from my bird. So now I can just move these up a little bit to protect this edge. I don't really, I guess I don't really have to connect, uh, protect the 
Misty Moonlight edge, do I? Because I'm using Misty Moonlight. And just come in here, just lightly go around again. Just putting a little bit of blue in there. And so there's our bird. So it didn't take that long. Let me just close up these ink pads. I'll finish out this card and all we need to do is mount it. I'm going to use my stamp and seal to mount it on a card of, and I can get this scrap out, a card base of early espresso. There's my card. I can put something on the inside. Now, I'm not really going to do much on the inside of this because I don't know what the recipient wants to do with this card. So, I will stamp one of these images though. Let's do, I'm going to take the mushrooms and I haven't mounted that stamp yet. Oh yes, I did. <laughs> I forgot. I haven't, I, I haven't mounted it. Yes, I have. Sometimes when I'm on my game, I, I actually do things when I should. Hmm. I think I'll get my soft suede out and ink up my mushroom. Just stamp my mushrooms in the bottom here. Oh, I got a little edge. Hmm. What to do, what to do, what to do. Well, I know what I'm going to do. Hmm. What? You give me ideas what to do. I'm going to just see if I can add a little bit of color. So this is not necessarily coloring. I mean, it is coloring, right? I'm just adding a little bit of color over here. Actually, the way that this edge caught, it, it looks nice and circular. I'm not actually gonna worry too much about it, but just add a little, a little bit of color around this mushroom. Kind of mimics the shading that's on the front of the card. So this is the other card that I did and I focused on just greens. So in my greens, I used um, mint macaron, and I used soft sea foam, and I used old olive. And I'm not, I'm not confident about that old olive. I wasn't, I, I wasn't really in love with it, but my color coach told me that mint macaron and old olive sort of go together. I'm like, okay. It's a, there is a little bit too much green here, but you know, green is probably better for most of you than the white that is showing up at the moment for those of us here in beautiful Maine. So when I use this retiform technique, I did the same thing. I just, I picked three colors. The difference between these two cards is I stamped in every single block. So I picked a particular stamp out of the Forever Fern set. So when I was working with Old Olive, every Old Olive section, oops, these two, got this stamp. I just randomly stamped in it. And I had to go ahead and mask off those sections again. And then every mint macaron section got one of these leaves. And then the soft sea foam got this one. And then I simply, I took a piece, oh, this is a new color. This right here is a new color. It's called Evening Evergreen. Or evergreen Evening. I think it's Evening Evergreen. And it will be making its debut in the May 4th catalog launch. And I used mint macaron here. You can do this is from the Forever Fern set and just a little um, epoxy droplet. So 
a lot of times Retiform doesn't have a layer on the top, but it doesn't. It can. There's no rules about that. So I see lots of numbers coming in. I don't see anybody. Can we order those color cards? Um, Diana, no. Let me check, though. I believe I have a download for you. Um, so I can, because uh, there's just something I printed off. I will uh, see what I can find. Did you stamp in and then do the background? Um, I actually did the colors first, and then I went back and stamped inside. Sometimes you can go ahead and um, color and then stamp at the same time without having to remove all the all the um, the sticky notes. But I'm way too one track mind to do that. <laughs> I would start to remove it and then oh wait I should. So I just. I colored first and then I went back and I and I stamped again. So join me again next Friday night at 7:30. Thanks for joining me. Bye.